In the ever-evolving landscape of Canadian politics, the current scenario is unfolding much like a gripping political drama replete with intrigue, divided loyalties, and a hovering veil of suspense over the future of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Within the corridors of the Liberal Party, whispers circulate with increasing intensity, casting a palpable cloud of uncertainty over Trudeau's tenure. Traditionally, one might expect that within the ranks, Liberal MPs, well-versed in the art of unanimous backing, would stand united. However, the narrative has taken an unexpected turn as discussions emerge about a potential secret ballot to assess Trudeau's leadership viability. It is not every day that one witnesses political figures advocating for such secrecy, akin to a high school prom king election, especially when the stakes involve steering the helm of a nation. While Trudeau maintains a facade of unwavering resolve, party discontent surfaces, creating a unique theatrical stage for an intriguing clash over future leadership and political direction. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. As discontent reverberates through the halls of Canada's Liberal Party, the spectacle of MPs scrambling to dictate the fate of Justin Trudeau is reminiscent of a reality TV showdown. This scenario is accentuated by the emerging faction within the party that seems to have embraced melodramatic tactics in the form of secret ballot vote. This novel approach, unfamiliar yet tantalizing in its potential power, is viewed by some as a means to usher in what they perceive as an overdue regime change. Notable figures such as Evan Baker and Samir Zuberi appear to champion this dramatic initiative, positioning it as the optimal means to gauge Trudeau's suitability to continue leading the party. Their voices echo the sentiments of those who feel change is necessary, referencing a diverse range of issues from policy decisions to personal leadership style. Meanwhile, Trudeau greets this challenge with a confident smile and wave, envisioning himself as a steadfast captain amid potential mutiny. Clinging to 2015's nostalgic recollection when waves of change buoy public trust, Trudeau seems oblivious to the reality that this trust has since eroded, drifting towards less liberal Canadians. The prospect of a secret ballot raises as many questions as it does eyebrows. Unlike their conservative counterparts, the Liberals bypassed the 2015 Reform Act, which facilitates internal accountability through such votes. Was this an oversight or a meticulously calculated strategic decision aimed at maintaining the status quo? Yvonne Baker argues that breaking from tradition in favor of democratic processes is requisite, suggesting it is only suitable for MPs to play a pivotal role in shaping the party's leadership. His perspective champions a shift toward transparency and democracy, even within the confines of the party's own halls. Uh, how can you say your party's united after numerous MPs told you to your face yesterday that you should quit? Uh, listen, the Liberal Party has always had uh, robust discussions about uh, the best ways to tackle uh, the issues that are facing Canadians. Um, we are united in our desire uh, to prevent Pierre Polyev from cutting the programs and services that Canadians are facing. Uh, we're going to continue to have best, uh, great discussions about uh, how I can best uh, lead the Liberal Party forward with measures that will uh, counter the growing misinformation and disinformation that Mr. Polyev is putting forward around Canadians. Um, we're focused on winning the next election. And we've got a great team around us to do it. I have given you a deadline. So are you planning on staying as Prime Minister past October 28th? Yes. Uh, oui. I'll say <laughs> say clear? OK. Um, in this uh, situation, we've heard that you've been listening, you've been reflecting, you listened in the caucus to the, the dissent that, that people voiced yesterday. At what point do you shift from listening, if this continues, and the dissent continues, and people continue calling for you to go, shift from listening to doing something? You've kicked people out of caucus before. Is that something that you're willing to do if this continues? Unlike the Conservative Party of Canada, we have robust conversations within our ranks about the best way to move forward. Um, I, I have a, a hard time believing that all Conservative MPs are fully supportive of uh, having had one of their members uh, get an all-expense-paid trip down to Florida for an extreme right-wing anti-abortion church. Uh, I have a hard time believing that all Conservative MPs are fine with a member of their front bench dining with neo-Nazis uh, over, uh, over the past years. I have a really hard time believing that all Conservative members are perfectly fine with their leader politicizing issues around national security, but refusing to get a uh, security clearance to be able to actually deal with foreign interference. Um, in the Liberal Party, we talk amongst ourselves. 
We share our perspectives. We're open about our united desire to make sure that Pierre Polyev doesn't get the chance to cut the programs and services that Canadians are relying on in this time of affordability crises. So yeah, we're going to continue to have great conversations about what is the best way to take on Pierre Polyev in the next election, but that'll happen with me as leader going into the next election. However, Trudeau, exuding an almost serene confidence, remains unfazed even in the face of declining approval ratings. Confidence, while potent, can be a double-edged sword, serving as both a staunch ally and a potential pitfall if misjudged. Amusement arises in observing Trudeau's conviction that public support can outweigh all adversity. This belief is juxtaposed against a backdrop where his own allies are seemingly engaged in an arm wrestling match. Recent by-elections paint a complex picture, hinting at Canadian discontent with Trudeau's leadership style. His waning poll numbers prompt questions about whether the governmental ship is navigating true or simply adrift. Meanwhile, a contingent of MPs voice concerns over Trudeau's reluctance to critically assess his future role, forecasting electoral disasters should alternatives like Pierre Polyev ascend. For some, this feels like a political apocalypse waiting in the wings. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, costs up, taxes up, crimes up, and according to 24 Liberal MPs, time is up. This Prime Minister has doubled housing costs, doubled the national debt, given us the worst economy in the G7. He's paralyzed Parliament with a cover-up of corruption, and two million people are lined up at food banks, but he cannot fix what he broke because his caucus is revolting. Will he call a carbon tax election today? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, while the Leader of the Opposition is focused on politics, we're focused on delivering for Canadians the things that matter most, whether That's it's right. more money in their pockets with the Canada Carbon Rebate, uh, more places at $10 a day childcare right across the country, dental care for seniors and more and more Canadians of all ages as we move forward to deliver things that are easing pressures on the pocketbooks and building a strong economy for everyone. This is the work that we're doing that we will continue to do while the Leader of the Opposition tosses us around empty slogans and place right. politics, we'll stay focused on the things that matter to Canadians. 24 Liberal MPs went to, caucus, to his caucus today to tell him that he's not worth the crime, cost or corruption. They wanted to tell him that he's doubled housing costs, doubled the national debt, sent two million people to the food banks, but he wouldn't let them. He silenced half of the dissidents. In fact, some were intimidated so much so that even Rosemary Barton, the Prime Minister's favourite journalist, said people don't have phones in the room and some people are going to the bathroom texting us. Oh. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister text those dissident Liberal MPs, tell them to come out of the bathroom and tell the whole world that he's not worth the cost? Yeah. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, in our caucus, people have always been free to speak their mind and have different perspectives. What is interesting, Mr. Speaker, is nobody in the Conservative caucus seems to have spoken out uh, when one of their members uh, got an all-expenses-paid trip to an extreme anti-abortion church in, uh, in Florida. Nobody spoke out. Well, one of the members on their front bench went and dined with, uh, with uh, white nationalists, uh, far-right German nationalists, and nobody uh, spoke up and is continuing to speak up when their leader refuses uh, to get a security clearance so he can deal with foreign interference. In Trudeau's perception, however, the equation remains straightforward. A resolute belief in the possibility of redemption akin to a boxer sidelining his adversary's prowess as the referee begins the countdown. Yet the party finds itself in a quandary devoid of formal mechanisms to displace its leader. This limbo, akin to a political purgatory, is compounded by an obscure leadership endorsement feature lurking within the party constitution, only activated post-electoral defeat. For those advocating for a resolution, the impasse transcends conventional norms, seeking instead to vent accumulated frustrations. The allure of a secret ballot shrouded in anonymity offers a potential path toward reconciliation and mending party fissures. Baker and his allies perceive it as a curative potion, while Trudeau views it as a needless sideshow. In an arena where political machinations often mimic a circus, this twist could very well morph into an engrossing spectacle that captures everyone's attention. The stakes are high and each move, each decision is watched, analyzed, and debated, not just within political circles but throughout the public domain, reflecting the nation's wider curiosity and vested interest in its leadership's future.
It is a test of political will, strategy, and ultimately, the very essence of leadership and democracy as the Liberal Party navigates its current crossroads. This political theater does not come without its audience as Canadians nationwide watch with bated breath, pondering the implications of these possible changes. The current political turbulence brings a sense of unpredictability that is both thrilling and unsettling for the nation. Such cascading effects could profoundly influence not only the trajectory of the Liberal Party, but also the broader Canadian political scene. Already commentators and analysts speculate on possible outcomes, each suggesting different paths and ramifications that could reshape the country's governance landscape. This moment transcends the destiny of a single leader and delves into how adaptive or resilient the fabric of Canadian political culture can truly be in the face of internal strife and evolving public opinion. Navigating these tumultuous waters of internal discord, the Liberal Party faces a juncture where tensions resemble volcanic eruptions ready to surface. The notion of a secret ballot, an unprecedented maneuver highlighting expanding rifts and divergent perspectives within the party, adds layers of drama to this unfolding narrative. A natural contemplation arises, is Justin Trudeau's steadfast confidence a commendable display of resilience or an inadvertent political misjudgment? This scenario evokes the familiar tale of leaders entangled in the storms of their convictions, surrounded by those searching for a sunrise over a new horizon. The theater of politics becomes a mirror reflecting deeper truths about leadership, loyalty, and the essence of democratic principles. As spectators of this unfolding saga, we stand on the threshold of a moment that could redefine Canadian politics. Alternatively, is it just a transient hurdle on Trudeau's path towards renewed leadership? These questions are not merely political inquiries. They form the foundational debates with the potential to shape national futures. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau can be unseated or might the internal caucus be able to serve another ploy? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.